Good morning, everybody. Good morning. How are y'all doing? I'm Ed. This is Lisa. We've written 14 books on this subject. We've had the opportunity to lecture here and around the world about what we're talking about. We have four kids. We've been married for 37 years, two grandkids, and two grandkids on the way. We're not talking down at you. We're talking with you. We're coming alongside you because we're fellow strugglers in F is for family. That's it. F is for family. And today, Lisa, we're talking about one of the most controversial subjects you can think about. We're talking about discipline in the home. And it always gets a little quiet when you start talking about trends and discipline because, Whoa. you know, there's all these different philosophies out there. Ed and I remember Dr. Spock who kind of had Yeah, he that, said, crawl into the playpen and reason with your toddler. Wow, that worked well. And then you have the authoritative parent on the other end of the spectrum. You have the helicopter parent. You have the agent parent that wants to you know, get the kid to Hollywood or, or maybe the NFL, the NBA or whatever. So there are all sorts of parental styles and thoughts and, and usually opinions are, are stated, questions abound when you talk about discipline. But Lisa and I are gonna give you the 411 before you have to call 911 on parenting. God is our perfect heavenly father. God disciplines, Hebrews chapter 12, verses six through eight, God disciplines those he loves. He didn't punish us. Jesus took the punishment on the cross for our sins. God disciplines us, and we learn, and we should learn and take our cues from God because the reason we have kids and the reason we have families and the reason we're here is to glorify God. So, so that's... That's what's at, at, at stake. So when you think about uh, parenting, think about how God parents us. Put aside all the different philosophies, all the different trends, and focus on how does God parent us? He parents us lovingly, but he loves us so much that he doesn't want us to behave in a way that's contrary to glorifying him. That's right. So I just think about the children of Israel. You know, God had this amazing plan for the children of Israel. They had been in captivity for four, was it 400 years? 400 years. 400 years. And God promised them the, the promised land, a, a land flowing with milk and honey that would have everything they desired. And God, that was his intention for them. But the children of Israel, just like you and I, had a freedom of choice, mm -hmm. a freedom of will, and they rebelled against God. And so they didn't realize that full, uh, beautiful experience like God had intended because of their rebellion. Well, I am a rebellious person too. You are as well. And so God has discipline in mind for us so that we can experience the life he intends for us. You know, our whole adventure of discipline really started, Lisa, October 7th, 1986, when bouncing baby Lee Beth was born. She was actually born on October 3rd, but October 7th. Oh, I'm, I forgot the date. <laughs> Sorry, Lee Beth, I love you. You know that. I just sometimes forget those birthdays. That's okay. Uh, yeah. So October 7th is when Dr. Reagan, D. Reagan, our Your birthday is December 18th. Thank you. Yes, it is. <laughs> And, uh, and yours is March 16th, so it's coming up yes. soon. Mm -hmm. uh, but October 7th was when Dr. Reagan came in. We're talking 1986. Came into the hospital. How many people room. were even alive then in 19... Okay, good, good. That's great. And so Dr. Reagan was giving us our discharge uh, instructions because here we were, brand new parents, ready to take Lee Beth home from the hospital. And frankly, I, I mean, you know, I didn't know exactly what to expect. And so Dr. Reagan began by saying, listen, we want her to grow. We want her to be healthy. So the first 30 days of life, you do whatever she needs for you to and do. And guys, this is the first 30 for 30. Yeah, the first 30 days of life. That was really That's hilarious. what it's called, 30 for 30, yeah. <laughs> Guys, right? ESPN, 30 for 30, right. 
So the first 30 days, first 30 he days, said, you do what teach, she wants yeah, to do. Yeah, I need to do whatever she needs for me to do in order to be healthy and okay. to grow. And, and the next did, 30. He said, from that point on, you start teaching her what you need for her to do. Whoa. And I was like, you know what? I think I could survive 30 days doing what she needs for me to do. And then I like that plan of starting to teach her what I need for her to do, what we need for her to do. But then the question that was looming large and begged to be answered answered was, what am I supposed to teach her? I'm bringing her home from the hospital the first 30 days. I'm going to do whatever she needs for me to do to help her get healthy and grow. But then what am I supposed to teach her? And that's a question that all of us need to address. What are we supposed to be teaching our children? This Let is me stop for a second too, Lisa, to interrupt you. I have the gift of interruption. <laughs> you might think I'm a single or I'm, I'm a student and I'll just play Angry Birds on my phone. Hey, this is as much for you, maybe even more so, I could argue, than for the parents and grandparents here because we want to coach you and give you the information from God's Word, some practical handles, so you'll know what to do when you have those bouncing babies. So it's not like, what do I do? Why am I really a parent? Where are we going and moving with this whole drill? And Dr. Reagan was um, very much into scheduling for babies. And I love that because I'm a very systematic scheduling type person. So I was like, yes, this is my kind of plan, you know. But God is a God of scheduling. God is a God of order. God does not intend for us to live in chaos. And so for three of our children, our oldest and our youngest twins, we did the whole schedule thing. For EJ, our son, for some reason, we, I, I, I think maybe it was because he had some health challenges. Yeah, but we didn't do anything. And pretty much for the first, I don't know, with EJ, for the first, I don't know, 15 years of his life, he survived on cheese and crackers. So, uh, pretty much cheese and crackers. And what's so cool is he married a Filipino girl, phenomenal girl, her parents are very active in our church. And now EJ's like, whoa, experiencing other foods. Mom, dad, why didn't you tell me? We're like, we did, but it was cheese and crackers. EJ, just cheese and crackers. But as far as the structure in the home, it was more like demand fed, like, you know, with the bottle, yeah. like, are you hungry? I'm, do you think he's I tired? mean, when he would eat meat or, or chicken, here's what he would do. He did, literally. Like a gag reflex. He would gag. And so we just gave in and said, here, eat cheese and crackers for the rest yeah. of your life. It's okay. But, <laughs> and EJ turned out great. I he mean, did. he's an amazing young man. But I can tell you that during that time, chaos was ensuing in our family. When, when there's structure and order, um, you fire on all cylinders, and it is so important. So discipline is about action before it's about reaction. So it's about the actions that we take. In fact, I have two uh, definitions for discipline If you, I'll share with you. Discipline is behavioral practices within boundaries. I love that. Let's say that together. Behavioral, behavioral practices, practices within, within boundaries. boundaries. In other I words, it. it's an action. It's, it's things that we do in order to achieve a goal. Whether you have a goal for your business, for your home, for, for yourself. It flows a from lot, this, it, it right? It flows from that. Yeah. And so it's the behavioral practices that you establish. So in the home, we should have behavioral practices practices. That's the action. Then you have the reaction, and that's the second part of discipline, which is the behavioral correction when boundaries are crossed. And that's what we're going to talk a little bit about today. But Ed, we talked about trends in discipline. Everything that we do as a family operates off of our family mission statement because trends come and go, but God's plan is for consistency that's right. throughout our entire and lives. That's, and that would be a good, a good homework exercise for everyone is to gather together and write a simple family mission statement. Our church has a mission statement. We exist to reach up, that's worship, to reach out, that's evangelism, to reach in, that's discipleship based off of two scriptures, two texts, Matthew 22 and Matthew 28. That's our mission statement. And I know even 
you know, years ago, oh, you gotta have a mission statement in your company. You gotta have a mission statement for your team, vision and values and all that. The family has got to be an entity with a mission statement that comes from this text. So let's, so let's, it, let's read ours and, and you can copy first, ours. First, if you're single, you should have a mission statement yeah. for your life. If you're dating someone, you should have a mission statement for your dating relationship. You should have a mission statement for you as a couple. If your kids are, are grown and out of the house, it's never too late to begin a mission statement because believe me, we are now uh, living, you know, we're in the empty nest so, sort of. Um, yeah. Somehow they keep coming Parenting never out. stops. I, but, I, don't, I don't want to rain on but, your parade, but... But they're it's watching. awesome. It just never stops. But they're watching us. They're watching how we live out yes. the mission statement. Yes. So this is ours. You're welcome to copy it. It's, it's very simple. Our family exists to love God, to love one another, to serve God, and to serve one another. That's it. So in our home, mm -hmm. everything, every action should lift up that mission statement. It should fall, come alongside. And when alongside. it doesn't, we've had to open up a can. <laughs> and that's what we're talking about. <laughs> yeah. A can well, of discipline. Talk about how we open up a can. What's I am going to talk about it? I know I will. I mean. <laughs> well, that's what we're here for. Oh, yeah. Okay. The first thing is, I think we have to, when you're talking about opening up a can of discipline, because God opens cans on us, Right. You and, have to and line You know all what, Ed? Going back to the um, the trends, yeah. it's interesting that God dealt deals with us mm -hmm. out of love. That's so sometimes, true. no his, question. Sometimes it's it's a loving uh, reprimand or a, a it's always it's always love well, is always, it's always behind, behind it. Behind it, but other times God's very firm, and some might yes. even say harsh. But it's about. You know, there's different variables involved. And if you look at just God's directives, I mean, just take the Ten Commandments. We step over those lines. It, it, it's going to be maybe okay for a while, but I'm telling you, there will be the consequences. consequences will hit, and it's not always yeah. always fun. So we want to just go over a few things that help us. Yeah, one parenting. of the things Lisa, that kind of goes back to what your dad did for a living. Her, her dad worked for the post office. So I married her for her money, and also. <laughs> Also, that was funny. Also, he, he had another job. He, he surveyed land. He was very precise on his boundaries and yeah. things. He was a very precise person, great handwriting, et cetera. So as parents, Lisa, we've got to mark off the boundaries. The boundaries. To set up in advance. We decide in advance what the behaviors need to be in our family. Again, it's the, almost like our dogs. We have, you know, the underground fence. And when they get near it, they have these collars. It only takes about one. And then they get it. Yeah, just one. Because then something, yeah, yeah. okay. But anyway, so you have clearly marked boundaries so that mm -hmm. you know how to behave. And in our home, you know, we tried to communicate those expectations. You don't want to make parenting boundaries a guessing game. They should be well laid out because every child is different. You, you have different personalities. You have different responses, different emotions, especially if you have girls. Whoa. Really another level. It, it, big, big, big We love girls. But there's big differences. They're so, playing chess. So it's Guys, important. We're playing checkers. So it's important to have all those boundaries set forth in the beginning so that emotions don't make changes in the Yeah, boundaries. if you have a guy, all you got to do is feed him cheese and crackers and you know, he's good. <laughs> boundaries. Boundaries. There's certain behaviors that are expected. This past week, I was at Michael's uh, craft store and there was a, um, I was in there on the paint aisle and on the other aisle, I heard this commotion and it literally was a little <laughs> girl who was just fussing at her dad and she was talking. She was in his grill, I mean yeah, like. Yeah, she was talking inappropriately. She was like, dad, I can't believe we have to do that. I don't want that one. Oh, dad, just buy it because it doesn't matter anyway. It's just so lame. And she was going on and Ooh. on and on. Now, before I past judgment, been there, done that. That's right. Once. Maybe once per child. 
And I'm not saying that I'm all dialed in, but... You're pretty dialed in. I'm pretty dialed in. Yes, I'm you way, are. Okay, just let's, this is the last service, so let's just put it all out there. Um, <laughs> I am way more of a disciplinarian than Ed is. Oh. Uh, way more. I, you just asked our children. I am. That's true. I am. I'm just... I'm, I was in timeout yesterday. <laughs> um... I'm just very, choo, 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 very. So, I mean, I'm listening to this and I've got my paint and my little sponge brush in my hand and I'm thinking to myself, hold back, Lisa, hold back. I mean, everything inside of me wanted to go up and just pat her on the back and say, bless your heart. And you know, when a Southern woman says, bless your heart, they're not praying. Watch bless- out. They're not praying blessings Head over for your the heart. Hills. When she says that to me, honey, if we get into a conflict, Bless your heart. Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. It is not praying blessings over someone's heart. It is saying basically, poor child. That's right. Really poor child. So I just, I, I wanted to say, honey, the very breath that you have came from this individual. Mm. Do not speak to your dad that way. It was uncalled for. And what should have ensued was dad saying, you will not speak to me this way. If you continue to speak to me this way, we're not buying anything from, and I think they were getting stuff for her Valentine's box. She continued and continued and continued. And so obviously she got what she was. I saw him in the checkout line, but he should have said, sweetheart, we're getting in the car. And you can make your Valentine's box from anything that we have at home, probably a paper sack from the grocery store. That's That's how you do it. Your behavior indicates. Now, I'm just sorry. That may be a little thing, but that little thing will become a yeah. The micro turns into macro. Micro goes macro very very quickly. quickly. And if you are thinking to yourself, "Oh, it's just a little girl. She's probably no." Whatever you're dealing with with your child as a toddler, just hold on to Mm. they're a teenager. Just hold on to they're in their And that little girl runs the show, no doubt. Maybe so. I would would guess. Let me me put forth a caveat here. I don't know what she had gone through that day at school. She was in her little school uniform, and she may have had someone bully her. She may have had someone say something hateful. She maybe made a bad grade on a test and and hurt or something had now segued into anger. And so it's it's important to validate the emotion. That's honey, brilliant. Honey, I know that you're upset yeah. and I'm not sure why you're reacting like this, but are you upset about something? Let her express that. But then you have to move quickly from validating the emotion to standardizing the reality. The reality is you may feel like this. I mean, the, the uh, validation is that you may feel like this. The reality is that but you must behave like this. That's the boundary. That's the parameters. That's that, and that, that's too, that survey. Lisa, if you read the book of Psalms, for example, David talking to his heavenly father, expressing his anger, his emotion, and God always redirecting. So in the Bible, love is a decision. Obviously, it's followed with emotion, but I think we have, 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 have defined love now as just feelings, and we let feelings define the family, and our feelings can get right. funky very quickly. And so. that's why it's important to, to do this in advance. So, okay, so we're talking about discipline. The next thing is that the sentence much, must match the crime. So if you're doing something with, uh, you know, with your children, they're misbehaving and mm-hmm. they're, they're having a difficult time, make the punishment or the discipline fit whatever they're doing. For example, the little girl. If she had had a problem with behavior in that store, leave without the supplies. That fits the crime. And then next year, when it comes Valentine's Day and they go to Michael's to buy supplies, do you think maybe the father should remind her, um, honey, do you remember what happened last year when we came to Michael's? 
Dad, don't remind me, that's not fair. No, I just wanna remind you because we don't wanna let this happen again. And then she thinks back and she says, you know, I behaved that way and didn't get Valentine's supplies, so if I behave this way, I will get Valentine's supplies. Mm -hmm. Do you see how it makes sense? That's right, bad boy, bad boy, what you gonna do, what you gonna do when they come for you? So, we have to have the sentence match the crime. One time, the, 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 the girls got into a cat fight in the car, and you know what Lisa did? She pulled over in our neighborhood, put the car in park, and she goes, get out. And she made the Twin Towers walk home as she followed them. In the car. In the car, yeah, in the car. Now, that came after I had said, hey guys. That's right. We love one another in our family. to follow through. We, you need to speak kindly to one another. Ba -da 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 -da. And they just weren't getting it. And I said, if you don't stop, I'm gonna, pull the car. I'm gonna pull the car over and y'all are gonna have to walk. And they didn't stop, and I pulled the car over, and they had to walk, and I followed behind them, and they were safe. Believe me, I walked to school every day in oh, the snow, she did. in the you rain, know it. back and forth, and I, I was totally snow. fine. And I get it, there are dangers and all of that kind of stuff, but our, mm -hmm. I followed behind. But the next time I told them, guys, y'all be quiet or I'm gonna make you get out of the car, you know what they knew? Mom's oh, gonna stop she's, the car oh, and yeah. get out. So. This leads to the next one. Consistency plus reliability equals security. What a great equation. Our, that's, ch our children that's desire security in the home. I desire security in the home. I desire security with God. So God is consistent with me. His word is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And my parenting, my word should be the same yesterday, today, and forever. That's good parenting. When I set up a boundary, stick with it, consistency, I'm teaching them that I love you, my love for you uh, determines that I want to correct this behavior. And God is consistent. And you, and you, they're, they're looking to right, us it's as not we mirror him. capricious in any way. That's right. Our, um, we, I was at Target with Lee Beth, our oldest. She was two years old. Now, this is back, first of all, when you ch check out at a place like Target or Walmart or any, any place with the long checkout lines, they sabotage parents by putting so many things that are desirable Oh, it's to demonic, young isn't it? There's cookies, it's right there's there gum, on their level. there's little toys, there's things that aren't even, they wouldn't even want, but because it's there and colorful, they want. And it's, it's just like trying to set us up for failure. And so we were at Target, Lee Beth just hit the floor in a tantrum. She was two and a half years old. I'm talking legs flailing. I'm sitting there thinking, the floor's dirty, that's germs, get up. But you know, and not to mention the fact, you're making a scene, you're making a scene. And this is back in the day when um, you didn't swipe a card or put in a chip. That's no, right, millennials. We had to write, we had to write a, a check. There's something called a check. And you wrote the check and you had to sign it and then you put a driver's license out yes. because they had to verify the check. I mean, all this is going on while the two and a half year olds on the floor having a tantrum. So I pick her up because guess what? I'm stronger than she is. I'm stronger physically and I'm stronger mentally. And I picked her up and her little legs are just flailing and her head's right here and her arms are like, she's just squirming and I'm holding and I'm writing that check and I'm like, Lord, get us out of this place. Lord Jesus, thank you. <laughs> and then we head to the car, get our things. And I think there was an applause from all the employees when we walked out of the door. <laughs> and we get in the car and I strapped her in. I manhandled her, literally. I manhandled her into the car seat, mm -hmm. strapped her in where she was safe and secure, but still having a tantrum. We get home, 10 minute drive, she's still crying. And I said, Lee Beth, I will get you out of the car when you stop crying. Now she's two and a half years old. Do you think she understood what I was saying? You better believe she understood what I was saying. She's smart. I'll get you out of the car when you stop crying. If she didn't fully understand what I was saying, she was about to understand what I was saying because she was gonna see, wow, tears stop, I got out. She just kept crying and it took time and patience on my part. I unloaded the things I bought at Target. Then I raised the garage and started cleaning the garage because she was still crying. But she stayed in that car seat. Not for too long, but she quit crying. And the moment I saw a break in the crying, I was like, get out of that car seat. Because I wanted her to learn. You stop crying, you That's get the it. reward of getting good. out. 
You see I the consistency that. and reliability equals security for our kids. And never forget, as a parent, you're stronger physically, but more importantly, you're stronger emotionally. Another thing to avoid as a parent, because this is something that once you become a parent, you say, well, I'm not going to be like my father. Or I'm going to be different than my mother. You know, I, I get it. What can happen with that mentality is the pendulum can swing so far, you find yourself as a rebellious parent, but in reality, you're a rebellious adult child. And you're wow. doing things just to wow. go, oh, I'm going to be the opposite yeah. of my parents. That's and so good. You know? That's so good. So that, that, that's, that's something that that's we need to... That's why I keep it according to what God says. Yes. Not here, it's not easy there. For all but, of us. But live in the uh, center of what God plans. And then finally, it's important to demonstrate in all discipline, reconciliation. Yeah, and we call this... And, and I'm not cussing when I say this, but we're, we're, we call this crossing the bridge. There was a bridge we used to live out from this area and to take our kids to school, we had to cross a bridge that was built on top of a dam, a D-A-M, and we called it the dam bridge. And I'm not cussing, I'm not cussing. <laughs> you, know, par- you know, parents, just okay. We called it the dam bridge of forgiveness because usually the fights would occur in the car and as we're driving across that damn bridge of forgiveness, I'm not cussing, D-A-M, we would have a time of reconciliation. And I think about the word damn because if we don't reconcile and we don't walk in forgiveness, it will damn up, somebody help me preach up in here, it will damn up the things in our lives that need to be flowing. That's right. And that's but true in every relationship. Every relationship, you, there's a damn bridge many, of forgiveness. Many times it was me who needed to apologize because the mornings were hectic. Maybe I was <clears> running behind. <throat> I would be upset with the kids. Maybe they didn't like their breakfast, whatever it was. And I was the one that needed to apologize. Yes. So when we would come to that point, the damn bridge Ooh. of forgiveness, we would say, I'm sorry, whoever it was. Will you forgive me? Mm -hmm. And that, when you look at what God has done through Jesus for me, an apology is difficult, but it is so necessary because God so freely forgave me. And and That's why EJ is such a, a, a great husband because all he was doing was eating cheese and crackers, watching his sisters just fight. There was occasion where we were going over the bridge that EJ might need to, have needed to say something, but he, he was definitely the easiest of them all. But all of us need it. Well, I want to continue on, but part two of it, if you enjoyed this, I have, talking about discipline. Now, we're going to continue this talk, but here's what we're going to do. Next week, uh, our daughter, Landra, one of the Twin Towers, she is going to speak, I mean, the raw and the real. We don't know what she's going to say about our family, but we're, we're an open book. She just wrote a book called A Different Kind of Love Story. And I want you to know all of the proceeds go to feeding the hungry children. Hers. So. And Sterling is always hungry. Yeah. A friend of ours tried to buy this the other day, and they were sold out at uh, Barnes, Barnes and & Noble. Noble. So. She's going to talk about dealing with an eating disorder that we didn't really know she had until later and how God has given her victory over that. So what a great weekend, especially, I mean, even guys struggle with this, with appearance and everything, but what a great weekend to invite someone, you know, moms, daughters, et cetera, with this. Because as you look at our culture, it's something that so many, many, many many people deal with. And we'll talk about that. Then the next week, Lisa and I come back to talk about discipline, part two. So thank you so much for your boldness. Thank you so much for showing up because you knew what was going to be served up today. Discipline, it's like, ooh, discipline. You could be kidding me. Well, it's fun. It's fun. Not always, but the result is fun, isn't it? It's fun. Well, F is for family. Let's do it God's way and discover what it means 
to flourish 